Hello everyone and welcome back to our video lecture. For today's discussion, we would be tackling a new chapter after your preliminary examination. We are already in chapter 4, Filipino Arts and Crafts. But before I tackle to you the basic objectives for this chapter, let me share to you the featured painting for this discussion. This painting that you can see in your title slide is entitled Planting Rice, Mount San Cristobal by the national artist Fernando Amorsolo. Planting Rice, Mount San Cristobal was created in 1947 and it is oil on canvas. We have three basic objectives for this discussion. Our first objective for us to be able to give concrete examples on the two different types of Filipino art. Our second objective, for us to be able to distinguish and give concrete examples of the different categories of Filipino musical instruments. And our last objective, for us to be able to discuss the history of Filipino art. Filipino art and crafts can be divided into two different categories. The first type of Filipino art form is traditional art. Now, what are examples of traditional Filipino art forms? Number one, we have folk architecture. Second, we have maritime transport. Third, weaving. Next, carving and folk performing arts. Another set of examples for traditional art forms are the following. We have folk oral literature. We have folk graphic and plastic arts such as tattooing and calligraphy. We have ornament, textile or fiber art and pottery. Now we have the second category of Philippine art. We have non-traditional art. Now, what are examples of non-traditional Filipino art forms? We have dance, music, theater, and visual arts. Another set of examples for non-traditional Filipino art forms are the following. We have literature, film and broadcast arts, architecture and allied arts, and design. Now, what are the differences between traditional art forms and non-traditional art forms? Number one, when you say traditional art forms, these are the kinds of art that we have been practicing before the entrance of the colonizers like the Spaniards. But when you say non-traditional art forms, these are the kinds of art that we have been practicing after the entrance of the colonizers up until the 21st century. So that is the first difference. The second difference is when it comes to the award bodies for traditional artists and non-traditional artists. So makers of traditional art forms can be nominated in the Gamaba Awards, Gawad sa Mandilikang Bayan Awards, while makers of non-traditional art forms can be nominated in the National Artist Award. To give you an idea of what Filipino traditional arts are, here are some examples. Our first example of traditional Filipino art is Bahay Kubo. Now, Bahay Kubo, the Nipahat or Payag or Kamali, is a type of stilt house indigenous to the cultures of the Philippines. The Filipino term bahay kubo literally means cube house, describing the common shape of the dwelling. The roof and some of the body of the bahay kubo can be made from nipa leaves, it can also be made from anahaw, and it can also be made from coconut leaves. Now, 
Our second example of traditional Filipino art is the successor of Bahay Kubo. We have Bahay na Bato. Bahay na Bato is a type of building originating during the Philippine Spanish colonial period. It is actually an updated version of the traditional Bahay Kubo. Its design has evolved throughout the ages but still maintains the Bahay Kubo's architectural basis, which corresponds to the tropical climate, stormy season, and earthquake prone environment of the whole archipelago of the Philippines and fuses it with the influence of Spanish colonizers and Chinese traders. Like the Bahay Kubo, much of this ground level was reserved for storage, so there are no rooms in the ground level. In business districts, some spaces were actually rented to shops while the main house is located on the second level. Our third example under traditional Filipino art and under folk architecture is Torogan. Torogan literally means resting place or sleeping place. It is a traditional house built by the Maranao people of Lanao, Mindanao. A torogan was actually a symbol of high social status. Such a residence was once a home to a sultan or datu in the Maranao community. A torogan is elevated above the ground. Hence, it is also an example of a stealth house by columns cut from trees of huge girth. Its walls are covered with plywood sticks and the roof thatched with dried coconut leaves. Now, if you would look at the picture on the left side, it is totally different from the example or description given, wherein the wall should be covered with plywood sticks. So, as you can see, the example on the left is an updated version of the Torogan, the traditional Torogan. Now that I have given you examples of traditional Filipino art forms, let us continue with non-traditional Filipino art. I will be featuring you the works of the prolific Mindanawan artist Kublai Milian or Ray Mujahid Ponce Milian. Now, Lai Milian is a prolific artist from Mindanao. He is known for his giant sculptures. Aside from being a sculptor, he is also an art photographer. He is also a painter, a digital artist, and a performance artist. Now, he graduated from the University of the Philippines. He is my fellow ISCO with a degree in visual communication and his first stint after he graduated, was as a visual artist for his family's hotel, the Ponce Suites Gallery Hotel, located in Saidonia Vicenta Village. He created all of the sculptures and paintings, as you can see on the left side, found both inside and outside the hotel. Now, here are some of the works of Kublai Milian. Let's see if you can guess where it is located. Let's see, number one. So if your answer is inside People's Park, then you are correct. All of the sculptures inside People's Park was made by Kublai Milian. The second one. If your answer is the Philippine-Japan Friendship Monument beside Philippine Nikijing Kai, then you are correct. So let's see the third one. Where is this located? If your answer is inside the Davao International Airport, so this is the Durian Monument, then you are correct. So another one. <clears throat> For those entering Davao City using the Buda Road or the Bukidnon Davao Road, you are correct. This is the Philippine Eagle Landmark. Next one. So this is the Agong House in the Kublai Art Garden in Kapataga. And the last work. If your answer is the risen Christ in Christ the King Church in Tagum City, then you are correct. Now, as you can see from the examples, Kublai Milian's work is all over Davao City. 
but this is the very first work he made for Yavo City. This is the commemorative statue of peace and unity, which is located in front of San Pedro Church and the Sangguniang Panglungsod. Now, the sculpture was Milian's first commission from the then mayor, Benjamin de Guzman, 1999. This piece was made to commemorate the centennial independence of our country. Now, what is the meaning of the subjects present in the sculpture? The three human subjects represent the so-called tribe people of the Davao region. The Tagalog, which is represented by the woman in the front. The Moro, which is represented by the man in the middle. And the Lumad which is represented by the man in the back, living peacefully in the city, which is represented by the doves.